This is my Christmas special, I guess. Now that it's getting cold outside, the yearly debate about engine preheating has started again. Do you need to wait for your engine to heat up before you can drive away? The answer depends a bit on the kind of car you drive, but for most modern vehicles, the short answer is no, you don't. The long answer though is a bit more nuanced. To understand why, let's start with where this idea came from. Back in the days when carburetors were common, warming up your car was essential. A carburetor needs the right mix of air and fuel to keep the engine running. In cold weather, the fuel didn't vaporize as efficiently and the air-fuel mixture would be off until the engine warmed up. That's why you have a choke. If you didn't let the car idle for a bit, you risk running rough, stalling or even damaging your engine. But that technology is long gone. Today, fuel injected engines automatically adjust the air-fuel mixture based on temperature. These systems are precise and efficient, even when it's freezing outside. As soon as you start the car, the engine management system will do everything for you. What does still matter though, is oil circulation. When your car sits overnight in the cold, the engine oil thickens and sinks to the bottom. It takes a few moments for the oil pump to push that thicker oil through the system and properly lubricate all the moving parts. This is why it's generally a good idea to wait a few seconds after starting your car before driving off. However, idling your car for extended periods beyond what's necessary for oil circulation doesn't actually help. In fact, it can do more harm than good. When a cold engine idles, it runs in a rich state, meaning it burns more fuel and leaves unburned fuel residues that can eventually cause a buildup on cylinder walls or the exhaust system. Modern engines at idle also produce very little heat, meaning it takes much longer to reach operating temperature compared to when driving. While the engine remains cold, moisture condenses into the oil, which can degrade its performance over time. And don't forget, the transmission doesn't start heating up until you start driving. So idling does nothing to help that critical component. The best way to warm up your car is to drive it. Once the oil is circulating, gentle driving will bring the engine up to its optimal temperature faster than idling. And by gentle, I mean avoiding high RPMs, hard acceleration or heavy loads until the engine is fully warmed up. Most engines you can hear when the engine is ready to go. Most cars have a higher idle when it's cold. Then it goes down in revs after a few seconds meaning it's ready to go. So trust the engineers. If the car thinks it's good, you should too. Personally, I let it idle for a bit while I scrape the ice from the windows and remove snow from the roof. If you don't have any ice in your windows, you can't say it's cold. When that's done, it's usually warm enough. Which brings us on to the next problem, the cabin heat. A lot of people warm up the car because they don't want to sit in a freezing interior and that's understandable but you don't need to actually idle the car in to get heat. Most cars will start blowing warm air within a few minutes of driving, even in freezing conditions. So what about the argument that cold starts are bad for your engine? It's true that starting an engine in cold weather puts more stress on it than starting in warm conditions, but it's unavoidable. It happens when you let the car idle or drive it straight away. So the key is to minimize that stress by letting the oil circulate for a few seconds and then driving it gently. So the next time someone tells you to let your car idle for 10 minutes before driving, make them drive an A2. I swear, last winter I arrived at work before that little 1.4 could get into the first mark on the temp gauge. If you're still cold however, maybe invest in a good pair of gloves, or an engine heater, or even just a cabin heater. They're pretty common, at least here in Scandinavia. Merry Christmas and subscribe.